Hey there fellow game developers, welcome back to our channel where we dive into exciting world of game development with Godot. And today we are going to spice up the game by implementing some of the awesome EMOTIONAL DAMAGE Well, not emotional, but just damage effects. We will learn how to make our player flash when it hit by an enemy and also push the player back. And on top of that, we will add a screen shake for that extra punch. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Before we unleash some awesome damage effects, let's quickly understand the basics of player movement in my game. First we define some variables like speed, health, etc. Then inside the physics process function, we add gravity to the player. Then we look for right or left arrow key. And I also make sure that we only move when we are on the ground and our health is not zero. Then for the left, we will reduce the velocity to move the player in the left direction but also make sure that we don't cross our maximum speed. Then these things are just for animation purpose. Now same thing is done here just for right direction. And finally, when we don't press any button, we will gradually decrease our velocity to zero and then setting up the correct animation. With just this code, our player is now able to move left and right. And finally, we will also create a take damage function where we reduce our player health. This function will be called by the enemy whenever we get hit. And that's it we can now start adding the damage effects. Okay, now first we want to add some cinematic impact when our player take damage. And what better way to do that than with a screen shake. So as you can see, I have a camera 2D node and to create a screen shake effect, we will just move the camera 2D node into some random position around it, which will eventually look like a screen shake. Now, obviously these points are going to be very close to the original position. Otherwise, it will look something like this. Now on looking closely, during the screen shake, the camera is actually oscillating up and down. And when there is oscillation, you know it's time for the sine function to shine. So yeah, we are going to use sine function for the screen shake. Okay, so now the question is how to do it. First of all, we need some sort of button so that we can turn it on and off. And for that, we will create an export variable shake and set it to false by default. Next, we will create a variable called time which we are going to use it inside the sign function. Then inside the physics process function, we will check if the shake is true. Then inside it, we will create a vector2 called final position. And for x and y, we will use the sign function and pass the time in it. Now before that, we also want to increase the time constantly. Then in order to increase the shake intensity, I will multiply the x with 10 and y with 20. I want the shake to be more intense in y-axis, that's why I multiplied it with a greater number. So once we get a new position, we will move our camera to this location using the lerp function. And once we turn off the shake, we will reset the time to zero. And that's it. Whenever you want to do screen shake, you just need to turn this on and it will work. Now instead of manually turning it on and off, I will add one animation player. Then I will create a new animation called damage. Here, first of all, I only want it to be 0.3 second long, and you should also set the snap to 0.05. Now at time 0, we will turn the shake on and create a keyframe here. Now move the cursor at 0.2 second, turn off the shake and create a keyframe. Now when we hit by something, we will simply play this animation. So inside the player script, we have this take damage function, which will run when we got hit. So I'm gonna play this destroy animation here. And also when our health is less than zero, we will simply play our dead animation, which will look something like this. And that's all you need to do to create the screen shake effect. Next up, let's make our player shine bright like a diamond when it take damage. And to achieve this, we will use a shader that will turn our sprite white. Now I have already explained how it works in this video, which you can watch it if you're interested. And similar to screen shake effect, it also has an exported variable which you can control from the inspector. Which also means that it can be controlled using animation player. So head over to our animation player. And here at 0 second, set the quantity to 1 and create a keyframe. Then move the pointer at 0 0.5 second. And again keyframe without changing the quantity. These two points will be automatically connected by a line indicating that both the points have the same value. Then head over to 0 0.1 second and set the quantity to 0 and keyframe it. Similarly, till 0.15, the value is going to be the same. Then at 0.2 second, the quantity will become 1 again. Then till 0.25, it will again remain the same. And finally, at 0.3 seconds, it will be 0 again. With that done, the whole sequence will flash the sprite twice in one hit. 
which looks something like this. One damage effect that can be seen in many games is pushing the player back when it hit by some enemy and that's pretty simple to implement. To implement this, the enemy will first look at his own position and then it will look at the player position and at this point the enemy can tell whether the player is in his right or left and then send this information to player so that it can push back in correct direction. So my enemy have an area 2D by which they detect the player and once they detected it, they are calling the take damage function and send how much damage they want to do. Now before this, we will check for the direction. So direction will be 1 if the player's global position is greater than its own global position. Or in other words, the player is in right side of the enemy. And if that is false, then we will set the direction to negative 1. And finally, we will set this direction variable to the player through the take damage function. Now come to the player script and here we are receiving this value in the push direction. Then we can simply set the velocity.x to this direction and multiply by 500 for magnitude. And I will also set the velocity.y to 500 and these both combined will push the player in the air. Now there are many things you can do in the name of damage effects. For example, you can add particles, slow the time using this function or add blood overlay over your screen which I already explained in this video in detail. Now since these are pretty easy to implement in any game, that's why I didn't add them in this video. And that's it. That's how you take your game to the next level. Also, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel for more Guru related content. And as always, if you have any question or ideas for the future videos, drop them in the comment section below. Till then, happy game developing and I will see you in the next video.